Would you like to know everything in math? All of the concepts, all of the structures and objects, all of the solutions to all of the questions, how everything unfolds, all of the branches of mathematics. How could we possibly do that? Join me. I am Andrus Kulikowskas, and this is Math for Wisdom. Here's my plan on what to do. We're going to move up to the meta level. And in the meta level, we're going to think, what are the ways of figuring things out in mathematics? What is going on in our minds when we are successful in mathematics? What is the perspective that is coming up? So to work on that together, Let's collect a bunch of examples. And if you think of good examples, please leave them in the comments. But why don't we start with the first example, the first proposition in Euclid's famous book, The Elements. It's proposition number one. It says, we have a line segment from A to B. That's a distance AB. How could we possibly construct an equilateral triangle where this segment is one of the three sides? So all sides should be the same. And actually all angles will be the same. But, but crucially, all three sides will be the same. How would we do that? Pause if you want to solve it yourself. It's a classic problem. Or if you want a hint, Here's one hint. Do you want another hint? Here's another hint. Okay, let's get the answer. So what we're going to do is we're going to break this down into conditions. We want to find a third point, okay, for this triangle, because a triangle has three points. And so where would that point be? Well, it has to satisfy one condition. The distance from the point to A will have to be this distance AB. And it'll have to satisfy another condition. The distance to the point to B will have to satisfy the same distance. It'll have to be the same distance AB. So, how can we do this? Well, we'll use what... Uh, uh, the mathematician, uh, researcher, and educator George Polya called, uh, in his book, How to Solve It, he called it um, the pattern of two loci. So loci means curve, uh, in, more generally it means like a solution to an equation. So there's two curves we need. So we'll draw one curve. We'll draw one curve. Here. So this is all the points that are that distance from A. Oh, great, it matches up. And now that's one condition. And now let's do another condition. We'll look at all the points that satisfy this other condition and are the right distance that we need. Yes, we did it. Now, what happens? All of these points are good for the first condition, and all of these points are good for the second condition, so we need a point that would satisfy both conditions. But oh no! This point will work. It's on both circles. And that point will work. It's on both circles. Did we do something wrong? No, we did it great. This point will work. You can have a, 
an equilateral triangle here, and all three distances will be the same. But this point will also work. All three points will be the same. Okay? We should maybe just draw it in just to, just to be happy about that. Ready? So here's our third point. And then we'll just finish it off. That's an equilateral triangle. Length AB, length AB, length AB. And just to be, just to be victorious and fair, we're going to do the other triangle too. And they'll be friends. We could draw these triangles all over. I think they're all right. Now, how do we do that? We are so smart. But how do we do that? What was going on in our minds? Let's take a look. I can see there is a, lad a power set lattice of conditions. That's all it was. There can be one condition, which is that the distance from to the point A needs to be AB. There can be another condition that the same distance should also apply from point B. There can be no conditions, which means that the point we're looking for could be anywhere. And then there is a set of both conditions. This condition for A and this condition for B. And they're both necessary. So this tiny little logical system, which we call a power set lattice, um, it's, uh, it's, it's all that was going on in the mind. And that's an example of a surface problem and deep structure, deep solution. And these are terms that I'm using uh, from the famous linguist Noam Chomsky, um, who was the originator of transformational grammar and other systems. Uh, and so the idea is in grammar that when you think in terms of a sentence, actually, if you study the grammatical rules, you know, what's grammatical, what's not grammatical, you will see that people are actually thinking in terms of something deeper. Okay, there's a deeper um, structure going on. So, similarly, uh, in mathematics, the idea is that on the surface, this may look like a problem about triangles and circles, but that's all superficial. Really, it's a problem about conditions. And so this mathematics could be quite contrived. It may actually not have it. It may be specific um, to people with eyes, for example, or to. But this is actually much deeper. This, uh, for this, we want to write down axioms and work in an axiomatic system. Let's see, this is working without any axiomatic system. We are uh, built biologically to work with this. We don't need any axioms. We just do it uh, instinctively. So the whole point would be to collect such patterns and see how they apply. Like you can see, once you have a pattern like that, you could try to solve this in three dimensions. Try it. Because in three dimensions, you would have uh, two spheres. And that equilateral triangle, if you thought of how two spheres come together, they would come together anywhere on this line. So this triangle that we formed would actually be rotating and coming to this point and then rotating deeper into the, into the plane and then coming back out. But the same would be true in four dimensions, five dimensions, etc. Once you have this pattern, it just opens up the universe. So there's a 
architect Christopher Alexander who studied what makes a building alive. You know, what makes people feel that they're in a place that is uh, supportive of their life. Uh, and so he uh, documented such patterns along with his colleagues in a book called A Pattern Language. Uh, he wrote about that idea in a wonderful book, a timeless, uh, The Timeless Way of Building. And so what we could do for mathematics, and I invite you, uh, is to collect these patterns. So please, in the comments, if you have uh, your favorite examples of problems, your favorite examples of solutions, your favorite examples of patterns, please share them. Let's work together. A great source is uh, the book by Paul Zeitz called The Art and Craft of Problem Solving. So I've gone through that book. I've gone through George Polya's book, uh, How to Solve It, and other books. Uh, but we really, I've collected about 200 examples, and I've made a system of 24 ways of solving things. And these are all ways that are deep in the mind that we're built to use, whoever built us. So, and also we can collect ways in all kinds of disciplines. It could be neuroscience, it could be chess, it could be art. Uh, I have also done that. And so that's a wonderful thing. So if you'd like to support this, if you'd like to a world where we work together, please like this video, uh, leave comments, subscribe, support me through Patreon. But most importantly, let's work together. I am Andrus Kulikowskas. This is Math for Wisdom.